Hello and welcome to Away World Outreach Sermon. We are so glad you're here because we believe that the Word of God has the power to impact and transform your life. So let's get ready now for this week's Word. If there is a lack that's going on in the body of Christ is this, we're not hearing from God. We're not hearing from the Lord. And when you're not hearing from the Lord, you could be strayed away in a heartbeat. I thank God that I had a mama and a daddy. They're here today. My mom and my dad are here. I am grateful. My mom, a little bit later, she's going to share her vision. She's seen a dream of this property years back before we even got here. That's vision. And the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28, as you're standing, you can take a look at it behind me on the screens. This is Joel 2, 28. This is a last day scripture that's taking place right now. Joel 2, 28. Then after doing all those things, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all people. How many want the spirit of God upon their lives? How many want the spirit of God in their families, their children, this church, this community? We just had a shooting in San Bernardino two days ago. Four people, they sprayed 12 people right in the corner of baseline. Two people are dead, four are in critical, critical condition. How many know we need Jesus in these streets? We got a pastor, Pastor Hines. Get Pastor Hines a hand. All the way from Adelanto, his wife. Pastor Hines, you want Jesus in Adelanto? Glory to God, he wants Jesus in Adelanto. We need the Holy Ghost everywhere we go. It says, your daughters will begin to prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. I don't know how old he's talking about, but I don't know. If the shoe fits, you can wear it. I don't know. And your young men will see visions. My daughter, she's 13. She's already starting to get dreams from God. How many want your kids to hear from God? I do. Can you put your hands up in the air really quick as we pray? Can you ask God and say, God, give me vision. Say it, say it, say it, say it. Say it. Say, God, I want vision. I need vision for my marriage. I need vision for my kids. I need, if you have a business, man, you need a lot of vision. Businesses are bankrupt every day. Yes, the economy is bad, but sometimes it's a leadership issue. Sometimes it's a leadership issue. There is no vision. There's marriages that are being destroyed, not for the sake of a husband doing this and a, and a wife doing that. A lot of times it's because of vision. We have kids that are going haywire because a lot of times we don't have vision for our kids. Get vision that your kid's going to serve God. Get vision that your, your daughter's going to be an amazing woman of God. Get vision that your kid is going to college. Get vision they're going to marry the right person. Get vision. Lord, we thank you for vision today. And this weekend, we celebrate 14 years, and we started a new church in the city of Medford, Oregon. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You can have a seat. Let's take a look at Pastor Marco this morning, and he's walking into our new family church in Medford, Oregon. Take a peek at this. Hello, everyone. We are here at Medford, Oregon, and we're launching the Way Family Church. This weekend, we hit the streets. We see a lot of people come to Jesus. We're going to feed them today. And it's so interesting. We're in a park again. Let's turn around. I want to take you to the sanctuary. You can take a look. There's our sign right there. And here we go right over here as we walk through. This is interesting because this is exactly how we started. We started in a park. We started in a community center. Actually, we started in a gymnasium and we're starting again 14 years ago. It's the same DNA. We're seeing people come to Jesus. And I really believe that God started in the same because we're going to get the same results right here in Medford, Oregon. Changing another city for the glory of God. Come take a look at it. The our new sanctuary here. We have right around 300 chairs, and our we have a praise and worship team that we brought in from California. Our adopt a block team been hitting the streets all week long, so it's an exciting time. We're getting ready right, right around an hour and a half away from starting our first service. It's right around 
nine something in the morning, but pretty soon people from the streets are going to come and receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Just follow me. Take a look at it. <laughs> so you got it, guys. You have an idea of what we're doing here, and and it's all because of all of us working together that we're able to reach another group of people that would have never been reached if we didn't come. See, to each man, God's given a work to do. That means He's given us a work to do. And if we don't do it, no one else is coming. So there's people going to be reached today for the glory of God because of the way we're allowed to San Bernardino. Thank you guys so much. What an exciting time. We're going to launch this church, and we're going to launch many churches across the United States of America in hurting, broken communities, bringing light to dark areas. Love you guys. God bless. Amen. Come on, church. Let's give God a round of applause. Vision. Take out your notepads, your phones, and your tablets really quick. If you're not used to taking notes, I encourage you to take notes. When we minister, you know, there's only a small, small percentage that you're actually going to remember. If you don't write it down, you can't look at it later, and it's hard to even remember what God is saying. We're currently in a series that's called 2020 Vision. Here's a quote. Throughout history, progress has been made only by people who have seen things that were not there. What is vision? Let me give you a definition. Here's number one. What is vision? Vision is seeing the future before it comes into being. Again, what is vision? Vision is seeing the future before it comes into being. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 says this. This vision is for a future time. When is it for? When is a vision for? Is it for now? Future is not, vision is not talking about the present and it's not talking about the past. Let me say that again. Vision, we're not talking about present and we're not talking about the past. We're talking about what? The future. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. Whatever God has told you, the vision he has given you, we are declaring it will be fulfilled. This building, we will come up with the with the additional $1.4 million. And pretty soon, by the end of this year, it's not going to say the owner's name that's currently on there. It's going to say the Way World Outreach. That this property belongs to Jesus. Can I get an amen? See, a lot of times we get vision and we want it now. With vision of God in any good thing in life, sometimes you got to wait a little bit. How many ever been in a waiting room of a doctor's office? Does anybody work for the DMV before I say anything negative? Do you like going to the DMV? Okay, people are saying, nah, no. That's like chaotic in there. You're waiting for your number to be called and you're waiting. I don't know. Maybe you've been praying about something and you're waiting. Maybe God has showed you something and you're waiting. Don't get impatient in the waiting room. See, the thing is, it's easy to praise God when all things are going great. You know, this morning at our 11 o'clock service, you guys heard about the couple that passed away this, this week here at the church? You guys hear about that? A lot of you shaking your heads no. I don't know if you have the pictures of Robert and Rosie. I don't know if you have that multi-team. You had it Wednesday. We have a younger couple, um, Rosie, she was 22. And Robert, he was about 28, 29. Last weekend, um, right before Father's Day, Friday night, they're coming back from Laughlin. And they're getting ready. Why? They're coming back on Friday, Saturday. They want to come back to church. And it's Father's Day. They have a son. Uh, I think it's a seven-year-old boy or something. Coming back from Laughlin. They ran right into a diesel truck. They were dead at impact. Now that's a tragedy. That's something you can't even fathom. That's something you can't think of. When we're going through, yeah, there they go. There's Robert and Rosie. We're not guaranteed the next five, ten minutes of our lives. 
And they, they, their the 11 o'clock service, her whole family showed up to church. I didn't know they were here. We made an altar call. People got saved. Her three sisters were here. Her mom was here. Her dad was here. And they were worshiping God in the house of God. They were saying, Lord, we're giving you our problems. And we're giving you our worries. We're giving you our cares. We're giving you our concerns. And I asked the mom, I said, how you doing? She said, man, this is the biggest battle I've ever faced. This is not good but what I'm learning to do I'm learning to praise God when things are not going so well I'm learning to trust God in my difficult times I have vision and she mentioned it, she goes, pastor I like the word because I got vision people are going to get saved because of my kids their legacy will continue on and yes this 11 o'clock I didn't know they were here they were sitting on this side I had no clue where they were here so during the altar call, I gave them an example that we're not guaranteed five minutes. And 11 o'clock service, we had about 50 people that gave their lives to Jesus Christ. And her mom looked at me and she goes, that's it, Robert. That's it. If you could use my daughter as a story, as an example of life's not guaranteed, Continue using my daughter as a story because I have vision. My kids are still going to reach people even though they didn't make that accident. You need vision. Sometimes you don't have a sin issue. The problem is we have no vision. Well, well Pastor, prove that. Look at Proverbs 29, 18. If you could pop it on the screen. Proverbs 29, 18 in, in the King James, where there is no vision, people perish. That word perish means they're destroyed. There's, there's massive destruction. Then I like it also in the New King James. It says this. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. In other words, it means this. A person that has no vision, they're just running aimlessly. Somebody that doesn't have vision is a person that's running wild. But when you have a vision from God, there's restraints. You're not going off to the club. You're not going off drinking because you got a vision of where you're headed. Most families are not making it today because there's no vision. When is the last time you've hung out with your kids and told them, where, where are you going the next 20 years? Let's sit down and talk. What college are we even thinking about right now? What ministry are you going to get involved with at the church we could be busy playing soccer. I love sport. How many soccer fans in the house? Mexico had a good game. Yeah, that was good. I love sports. But sports isn't first. Jesus is first. So parents, when is the last time you sat down and covered vision with your kids? Because vision is seeing the future before it comes into being. Mondo, if you can help my mama come to the stage. I was waiting for her all day to come. It seems like the one o'clock, you just get the very best every time. My mom wasn't here. My mom was not here, 9 and 11. She came to one o'clock. And all day I wanted her here because if you could get an extra mic, yeah. Because I wanted her to share. This building we're standing here today is because of vision of my mom. She got a dream years back of what this building looked like. See, if you have no vision, you're just running aimlessly, and we make, a, we make a lot of bad choices. But when you heard from God, you'd know what, what direction, where you're headed. Mama, what happened years back? I remember you calling me and Marco, and yes. you seen this building in a dream and a vision. Grace, Can you share? Give it up for my mom, you guys. I love her. God bless you. And he already had one of my scriptures, which is in the book of Joel, about vision. And I'm 76 years old, and he was saying, God uses young and old, <laughs> and God has always used me yeah. with dreams. Every dream that I have stands on a vision that God gives us. Wow. And um, before I go into the... The dream that I had, I want to say something. Uh, I'll use another scripture before that. It says, 
When Jesus was here, he was with his disciples. He said to them, they were walking, and he said to them this, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. Praise God. God looked from above with compassion. I saw San Bernardino. And he said, there is a work to be done there. There are souls that need to be saved. I need some laborers. Praise God. You're not here by choice. You're here because God ordained for you to be here today. I'm here because God ordained for you to be here. This morning, I don't know how many of you know, but I was diagnosed in, Jan in December with pancreatic cancer. And there's some days that aren't as good as today. And this morning when I woke up, I usually come to the 11 o'clock service. I was in horrible pain. I told my husband, I says, I don't think I can get dressed. I don't think I'm going to make it to the 11 o'clock, but I'm going to make it to the 1 o'clock service, I told him. I'm going to make it to the 1 o'clock service. Yeah. Praise God. And I expected to make it. I'm here because God has a word today. Right. Praise God. So God looked and he said, hey, I need some laborers. Yeah. Behold, God chose my sons to come to San Bernardino. Praise God. The first dream I had was that I saw angels, thousands of angels surrounded the city of San Bernardino. That was years ago. And I went up to one of the angels and asked that angel, what are you doing here? And the angel said, I'm waiting for the way. <laughs> I'm waiting for the way. I called my son and I told him, when God calls you to start a church, because I knew God would, had called him, the name of the church is going to be the way. Then it was added the way world outreach. When we saw this morning, my son in Oregon, Beginning a new mission. That's because God ordained it. Praise God. And God gave a vision to my sons to start this ministry. But this, is, this building here is straight from the throne of God. I had this dream that I was driving on the freeway that passes right in front here. I was, dri I I was driving and I looked over. And I saw this huge building. It wasn't the colors that it is now because they painted it different, but the colors that it was before. They had been in several places before, Sierra Way and all the other places when they started this ministry. And I says, I called Marco and Robert, and I says, guess what? God showed me the building. So as I was driving, I saw this building from the outside. And hundreds and hundreds of cars parked outside. There was no sign or anything yet. So I, um, I said, I wonder what's there. This is a Sunday morning. And look, because I saw there were all like warehouses here. Why are there so many people there? A warehouse? They don't have a lot of people there. They have like big trucks and things coming over. I wonder what is there. Then all of a sudden... I saw this building, and from the top of the building, I saw a sign. It shot all the way up to heaven, and it said, the way. <laughs> Praise God. God has a vision, and he gives us a vision. But without the laborers, you guys are all laborers. This building is here because of the laborers. It started with my sons. And all of you who made the decision to be laborers for God. We have a world out there that's lost. We need laborers. Just as God used 
touch us, to come to him, he touched every single one of you to bring others to Christ. So God has given you vision. Don't lose it. The word says without a vision, my people perish. So you have to keep up that vision, church. God is a God that completes everything. This cancer that I have, I already told God that I was going to be here. And I know because he says by his stripes I'm healed. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, because I have a vision, that I'm going to be here permanently. Because I lived in Florida. God is good. May God bless you and keep up being laborers for Christ. Wow. She said that, and now my mom and dad, they both moved to California, to San Bernardino. Just got their place down the street. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you have to get vision. Tell the person next to you, you have to get vision. Without a vision, we will simply relive, relive the past over and over again. Without vision, you're going to relive the past over and over again. Number two, vision is looking into the unseen realm for our hope. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Our hope is not in the system. Our hope is not in the government. Our hope is not in a city. Our hope is not in a man. Our hope is in Jesus. How many have put their hope in Jesus in this place? Vision looks into the unseen realm for our hope. 2 Corinthians 4.18. So we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen. For the things which are visible are temporal, just brief and fleeting away. But the things which are invisible are everlasting and imperishable. The things you're seeing right now, they're just temporary. The sickness that you're seeing right now is just temporary. The marriage issue you have right now is just temporary. The financial issue you're having right now is just temporary. It's temporary if you get a vision. If you don't get a vision, then you just relive it and relive it and relive it. It's like this building. If we don't have vision, well... The owner just stays with the property, keeps it in his name. But that's not the case. He gave us vision. We're going to buy this place, and it's ours. And not only in San Bernardino, we're going to start churches all around the world in inner cities. Just this year, put up the pictures if you haven't seen it. We are building a school a Christian school in Uganda, Africa, that's reaching hundreds upon hundreds of families with the gospel. I just got news from our pastor in Uganda. They're at our campsite, they're at the school, they're in that region. They just had a big revival and hundreds of people gave their lives to Jesus Christ. That's vision. But if you have no vision, you begin to perish. Here's number three. Vision allows us to see what's possible. Vision allows us to see what's possible. Can your marriage turn around? Can your kids get on fire? Can you get past that obstacle where you're at? You, our power we can't, but with God all things are possible. This is Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus looked at them and said, with people... As far as it depends on them, well, that's impossible. If you're just looking at man, man, that's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. People, we had pastors tell us, don't go to San Bernardino. You're crazy. You won't make it. Nine out of ten churches in San Bernardino in the first year, they shut down. There's not enough finances. You can't do a ministry. 
Well, we want to do buses. You can't do buses. Buses cost thousands and thousands. Well, we want a big kids ministry. You can't do a kids ministry. With man, yeah, you can't do it. But with God, all things are possible. All your, you're just a vision away. Write this down. How do you get vision then? How do you get vision? You got to pray to God for vision. God, I need a vision. I pray. God, I want to hear your voice. How do we get vision? We pray. We seek the master. He knows everything. Get vision. We pray. How do you get vision number two? Is this. Find out and clarify what you're passionate about. You're going to have to clarify what you're passionate about. When you are passionate about something, watch dreams and visions come out of it. But we're not passionate about anything. No dreams or visions. And number three, how do you get vision? Hang around some visionaries. Hang around some people that are thinking outside the box. I was once told this, if you're the smartest guy in your group. Oh, some of you guys have heard it. I was once told, if you're the smartest guy or woman in your group, get out of the group fast. Because you're not learning one thing. Hang around some people that are thinking right. We are who we hang around with. The conversations and the gossip, stay away. Vision. And where's this church headed? We're paying off this building. Where's this church headed? We're starting a church in Medford, Oregon. The fire is so thick in Oregon right now. Just yesterday, Pastor Marco called me. And they had a rally. Because today's their first service, 11 o'clock. Yesterday they had a rally. See, when you get vision from God, God begins to show up. So they had a rally, they had some music, they start playing, they invited all the homeless people out and different people in the community and people started coming, they're giving out hot dogs and then there was a lady blocks away, she's in her house and she hears the music and she gets out of her house and when she got out of her house, Pastor Marco heard the story later after she came and explained what happened, like she went into a trance. She got out of her house and she just starts walking towards the music, towards the rally. Then it got even crazier. She takes about 10 yards, 20 yards, and now she hears an audible voice. And here's the voice. Her name is Deborah. Keep on walking, Deborah. I love you, sweetie. Keep on walking. Your miracle is right around the corner. Keep on coming, honey. Well, she, she freaked out. She stopped. She goes, who's talking to me? It was the voice of God. And God, how do we you know the voice of God? This is the next thing. God says, it's me, your heavenly father, Debbie. I've been calling you and I love you. Keep on following the music. Keep on going, sweetie. I love you. It's your heavenly father that's calling you. She walked for blocks and blocks. She finally got to the rally. Um, our, our, our worship team, um, Emilio Nost, they're helping us out. They're singing. And this lady, no one knows her. We don't hear the story. Pastor Mark doesn't hear the story until the whole event is done. Then he explains, she explains herself. She walks down during the music and she lays on the asphalt. And just pours out and starts crying. She gets delivered. We try to lay hands on and some of the altars said, just let her go for a second. This lady's having a moment of God right now. See, when you get a vision from the Lord, it changes everything. Be careful you're not chasing your own vision. Because in, in your own vision, it's just chaos. How do I know? Well, I heard from God. One of the hardest things for me as a pastor is when someone comes to me and says, Pastor, I've heard from God and i got to do this. And when they said, God to do this, in my head I'm thinking, oh my goodness, did they really hear you, God? <laughs> because the story they're telling me doesn't make any sense. The story they're telling me doesn't line up to God's word. The story they're telling me, it, it doesn't line up with how God talks. But once somebody tells me, I've heard from God. You know what that does to me as a minister? What it does, it kind of puts my hands behind my back. And say, okay, you heard from God, you sure? Yeah, yeah. 
instead of this, hey, pastor, you know what? I think I'm hearing from God. What do you think right now? And you bounce it off a few people. Because how many know your emotions could get the best of you? How many single people in the house? You ever dated a psychopath? <laughs> you ever dated a wacko? Oh, they're casting over the Romeo and Juliet. They turned out to be Freddy Krueger. Why? Our emotions could get the best of us. That's why you need people around you. Hey, what do you think? And don't, t don't ask people that are, that are failing in that area. <laughs> you got a marriage problem? Don't talk to a person that's been divorced three times. And they're getting ready for their fourth divorce. Find somebody that's married 48 years, 28 years. By the way, Pastor Marco, Pastor Lisa, their 29th year anniversary today. So give them a shout out later. Call them up. Give them a shout out. I want a successful business. What do you do? Hang around business people. Not only business people, hang around a successful business person. Don't give me a guy who's going bankrupt. <laughs> He's going to teach me how to be bankrupt. I want people with vision. Can you stand up for a minute? Can you bow your heads and close your eyes? Nobody leaving, please. When you leave, man, it causes a lot of distraction. Just hang out for two minutes. I promise we'll be done. Can you bow your head and close your eyes for a second? And I want you to seek God for a minute, and I want you to ask God, God, I need some vision. I need a new vision again. I've been burned out. I've been tired. My family, my marriage, my kids, I'm burned out. I need a new vision. Maybe you're like my mom, believing for a miracle. Doctors telling you this, telling you that. They're showing you pictures. They're showing you x-rays. They're showing you diagrams. And it's been just beating you up. And you've been hard to say, man, I'm healed. Because you're seeing all these doctor's reports. You got a husband that's not acting right, a wife not acting right. It's like you go home. Some of you guys are going home right now. And you just want to hang out in church all day. Because you don't even want to go home because the chaos is so, it's just so much in the house. You're like, man, I don't even want to go home today. I just want to stay here. And we understand that. We've all been there. Things are just going chaotic. And you need vision. Say, God. Give me a word. Just like God showed my mom, the church, the name of the church, the building. We would not be here if my mama didn't hear from God. Because when you don't hear from God, you start making unwise decisions. Now you're looking for a building that's not a warehouse. You're in trouble. This is our building. Now you're looking for a building on the other side of town. Let's take over the carousel mall right now. God didn't say take over the carousel mall. It's not going to work out well. we got to hear from God. Lord, would you speak to us, God? Speak to us, including myself. I need your voice so much, God, for my family, my marriage, my kids. Being an assistant pastor with Mark, Pastor Marcos, man, I need a lot of vision. I want to hear your voice. I need to hear you. We pray for Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa, our, our lead pastors, that you would continue giving Pastor Marco vision. Continue speaking to him. The moment you quit speaking, God, man, we can't make it. We need you. Pastor Hines, speak to him and his wife. Speak to Pastor Hines and his wife. Continue to give them vision for their church. Give them vision for the Adelanto area, the Victorville, in the, in, in the desert. Give them vision. Give our worship team, our prayer, vision. Speak to our kids where they won't go astray. Let them be focused on what you've told them. Thank you, God. Wow, what a powerful word. Would you let me pray with you real quick? Father God, I just thank you so much for my friend on the other side of this screen. And I thank you, God, first of all, that they're here, that they made their way here to the page. And we thank you, God, that this message impacted their life today. I ask you, Father God, that this word would go into their heart and touch those, those deep places, God, that, that need to be stirred for purpose and for change and for breakthrough and for healing, God, and that you would just provide all the necessary steps to get them to the next season that you have for them in their life, God. I ask you, Father, that you would just bless them, that you would encourage them, that you would bring them peace and joy in every area of their lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 
All right, guys, well, thank you. If this video made an impact in your life, like I know it did, would you consider making an impact in someone else's life? How you could do that is by heading over to thewayworldoutreach.org slash donate today. Also, while you're here, why don't you take a look at one of our other great videos that we have on the page. And of course, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.